Hi everybody, we are going to take a look at a writing a method that takes input from the user uh, and specifically takes an integer from a user. So this is going to involve doing some input validation to make sure that what is being entered is actually an integer. And then also we'll add a second method that asks for an integer within a certain range so we can check that the input again falls within that range. So first let's start by creating the framework for a method. So we'll start with public static int because this is going to be returning an integer. I will get int from user and I'm going to put a string prompt as a parameter. That can just be the message that we're going to uh, have go to the user. So for example, down our main method, if we said int x equals get int from user and we might write make the message, uh, write the message, uh, enter your favorite number. All right. So that's the goal is to have this method work so that it takes it an int, reads it back, and then we just print it out and make sure that it works. But let's think about what's going to be involved with writing this method. So similar that to a uh, get string from user method, which we've written before, uh, we're going to create a scanner, one of the first things. So we'll do sc new scanner system.in. And that's going to necessitate fixing our imports because we did not already import the scanner class. So I'll just have NetBeans do that for me. And there you see the imports up ahead. Uh, we're going to print out this prompt system dot out dot print line prompt. And uh, next we're going to have the scanner just scan for an int, which it can do. And we can uh, return this on the same line to sc dot and you can there you see that next int pops up in my tooltip menu. So I'm just going to select that, put it in, and we should be all set. So let's try uh, testing this program. And of course, we should probably print out the result down here so that we can actually see that it did work. Line, you entered. All right, so let's test it now. And run our program and down here in the terminal window below, I know the font is a little bit small, but it says enter your favorite number. I'm going to write 22 and it says you entered 22, build successful, everything looks fine. Let's test it again, but let's try to uh, break it this time. So enter your favorite number. I'm going to enter banana. And what do you know? It crashes. Uh, so the problem that we have here is that we are not validating our input. I'm typing in the word banana. Uh, when this uh, the scanner is looking for input from the input stream. And I'm saying to also process it like it is an integer, except it's not an integer, it is a string. So it's failing right here where it's trying to convert that string to an int and it's not possible. So we can put a little bit of protection in here by adding a while loop into our uh, method up here. And in this while loop, we're going to say while sc dot has next int. All right, so when there is an x int, we want to move forward to this return statement. So while we don't have a next int, so we're just going to negate that condition. While I don't have a next int, we're going to just uh, skip the input. So we're going to say sc dot next. Uh, now, this line is necessary because what it does is it takes the uh, current position of the scanner. Uh, so suppose it was on line nine. It takes the current position of the scanner and says, skip over this next token. It's going to check if this thing is an int with the has next int. It says that it's not, but then the scanner is going to remain at that exact same position. So if I didn't put sc.next, I'd be caught in an infinite loop and it would stay there for forever. So instead, we say skip it check if the next thing is an int, it's not, skip it, check if the next thing is an int, it's not, skip it, and it keeps going on until we find an int. And it might be nice to put a little print statement in here just to remind the person at the keyboard to type in an actual int. Uh, a valid int, try again. All right, so now let's test this. <clears throat> and again, we wanna make sure that it just works by default, so we'll enter 22, you enter 22, that works. Now let's try entering in banana. It's not a valid int. Try again. How about if I spell out the word two? Not a valid int. Try again. What if I put 1.2? So 
So I've put in a double value, not a valid int, try again. And I can put in 22, it now works and it doesn't crash my program. So when we talk about input validation, we mean validating that the data being put in is what your program expects and what it can use to keep running. If we didn't validate the input, we'd get the crash that we saw earlier. So let's uh, change our prompt a little bit down here. And now we're gonna say, enter a, how about a positive number, a positive number between one and 10. Okay, so, <clears throat> We only just changed the prompt here, and if I put in 8, it of course works. But if I put in 57, it still works, even though uh, that's an int that is not in the range specified by the prompt. Now, we have a little bit of an issue here, because the code that we just wrote is validating that the input is of the right type. But we didn't do anything to validate that it's in the uh, acceptable range that we're looking for. So we can uh, you know, write a new method to, to take into account having a min and max for a range. So again, let's start by creating a method, public uh, static int, get int in range, and we'll put in two parameters, int min, comma, int max. All right, and now, we could start by writing a scanner and printing a prompt and doing this while loop again, but we've already done a lot of that work here. So instead of rewriting a lot of this code, we can just utilize it. So we can just take this get int from user method here, all right? Int num equals get int from user. And let's make the prompt something that takes into account the, uh, the min and the max. So enter a number between min and x. All right, so if we run this, we should be able to just return num at the bottom. And before we go any further, let's just test to make sure this actually works. So we're gonna go right down here instead of saying get int from user, we're gonna say get int in range. Now I'm gonna get an error message here because it no longer expects a prompt. Now it expects the min and the max range. But if we run it, enter a number between one and 10, and if I enter eight, it works. But if I enter 57, it still works even though it should not. So <clears throat> oh, we should do one more test. So let's make sure that if I try to enter, say banana, it'll still work for us. Oh, and it looks like I'm crashed, there we go. Banana, uh, not a valid int, try again, 57, great. All right, so, so far, so good we didn't break anything. But let's think about how we can make this method work properly. So again, we, we don't know if the user is going to enter it correctly the first time. We don't know if they're going to uh, enter it correctly on the second time. We just know that we need to keep asking them until they get it correct. So one thing we could do is we could say while, while, the num is less than min or the num is greater than the max, have them enter it again. So what we could do is take this and say, enter number between min and max, maybe we just change this line to say, try again, number must be mean min and max. All right, so let's test it. <clears throat> Enter number two, one and 10, and do eight, it works. Let's try 57, oops, starting again, 57. Try again, number must be between one and 10, how about negative five? Try again, how about banana? Not a valid int, try again, All right? How about 56? Nope, okay, how about seven? There we go. All right, so. We've written two methods <clears throat> that can be used either, well, this one, the get int from user can be used by itself, uh, or using the get int in range, we can use them in conjunction uh, in order to validate input, both that it is an acceptable input, it is an acceptable int, and also if we want to uh, run it in a specific range. Now, we could, of course, uh, make a third version where, look, 
static int uh, get int up to, and we just give a max. And you know, in this method, we might say only want to return numbers up to uh, or from one to max or one to ten, one to a hundred, one to a thousand. Uh, and this is actually very straightforward because now all we're going to do is call the get int in range method and just hard code the number one and then pass along the max. So that is a really easy add on. Uh, the only thing I would specify here is be sure to put your block comments in, which I didn't do for any of these methods, but I'm going to do now. So uh, validates and int as input from the user between one and max inclusive. All right, so uh, when you're writing a method like this, just always be sure to specify what your bounds are and whether it's inclusive or ex exclusive of those bounds. Uh, and that becomes, that's very, very important uh, to avoid off by one errors. So for example, if we were just to put a zero in here, uh, that's not obvious by the, uh, you know, the description. If we just said get int up to a number, we don't know whether it's going to go from zero to that number or one to that number, if it's going to go zero to max minus one. So if we're going to do one to max, we just want to be uh, explicit in our description of the method, how it works, what the bounds are, so that people can use the method without any concerns. I hope that you found this helpful, and I hope that it helps you to take in integer input in your Java programs. All right, bye now.